So cold. Songa. Songa, songa. I mean, it's not as cold, but we like to get cozy when we sit. When we sit here. So I'm gonna get very cozy. So, hi guys. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new, Karibu, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for always making time to come and be with me. You know, um, I'm still getting used to this culture of America and emails, not emails, see, already I'm getting it wrong, and mails. Over here, mails are very, very important. That's how most of communication is done. Um, you know, like companies will send you their uh, whatever on mail. If the government needs to send you something, they also send you an email. They also send you on mail, and that's not something we're used to. Uh, in Kenya, you probably go and pick it yourself, like the mailing Thing in Kenya has really it's it's sort of like outdated uh, for lack of a better word and so since I'm mostly the one in the house or at home my husband passed on the duty of checking mails and so sometimes I'll go days without checking and it's like did you check in you know the mail box and I'm like no I think I have one week I'm not checked it's like no you need to check like three times in a week and so yeah I was just at the mailbox and I saw something nice and I was like, you know what? Let me hold and I'll come open it with you guys. This is a mail from USCIS, National Customer Service Center, United States Citizenship and Immigration Services. That's USCIS. <laughs> this is so nice, guys. Oh my God. And it expires in 10 years time. This is... United States permanent residence card. Oh my gosh, guys. <laughs> thank you, God. Thank you, 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 thank you. Oh my gosh, I'm super excited. Wow. So, as far as the green card is concerned, and then on on date 14, two days after I landed. Um, they sent me my social security number. So I've had my social security number. Like, that was the first thing that came. So oh, social security card. It's right there. And so now I have all the papers I need. I have my social security number. I have my current residence card. This, guys, is the beauty with the marriage visa. You might be delayed in your home country, but when you get to the U.S., Everything is sent to your mail, like you don't struggle, you know. You just receive everything on mail. Um, as opposed to the K-1 visa. K-1 visa, you get here, but you don't get residence status. You cannot work. You cannot go to school. Like, you just have to wait and, you know, get married. And then adjust status, which takes time. So, I mean, the only good thing with K-1 is you not suffer the long distance and you'll be you know, experiencing the process with your partner. But for me, uh, I think any day, any time, I would rather do the CR1 uh, because then there's no way my people are missing my wedding. Like, I'm my my mom's, my mom's firstborn, so I was like, there's no way she's going to miss my wedding because most people don't make to come for the wedding. If you check most K1 people, when they get to the US, they mostly do their weddings without their people from back home if that makes sense yeah and i was not about to deny my mother the enjoyment that she would get by just seeing me in a white gown you know yeah but all in all three years of waiting have finally paid off and we are now officially residents here in america my son is an a u.s citizen so him is okay i can actually I can apply for citizenship in two years, nine months, if I want, because I'm married to a U.S. citizen. So that's the privilege. That's the privilege that we have. When you're married to a U.S. citizen, you don't have to wait five years. So as you're excited about all this good news, um, let me take this time to tell you guys, actually, why my visa took so long. I'll tell you guys why my visa took three years. 
And before I proceed, I just want to say like, if you're out there and you're stuck in this process, please give yourself grace. And if you're out there and you know someone's stuck in this process, please give them grace. It's not easy. This thing of you keep asking someone, oh, Jaina, you've not gone. What's what's wrong with your visa? What's what's happening? What are you going? What are you living? I thought you have already left. Like, just give people grace. It's not easy. And the things that were said, let me speak for me now. Where? See, Africans, we have we have words. Ah, and Kenyans, to be specific. Where? Mara, uh, my husband is just lying to me. He's he even has a family back in the US. That's why he doesn't want to take me to America. Mara, oh my my husband is is a criminal. I also had uh, there's something my husband is hiding from me. I should be very careful and just like you know uh, do an investigation on him and all these things as they, were, as they were being said. I'm like I wish you guys knew how the process works when you're applying for this kind of visa, this spouse of visa. There are two people who are in constant communication with USCIS, and it's usually the applicant and the petitioner. So the applicant is the one who is being applied for. In this case, it's me. And the petitioner is the one who is applying. In this case, my husband, the US citizen or the US permanent legal permanent resident. You know? So those two people are always in constant communication. And so I could see, I can see what's happening, you know? So it's good for you to understand this process before you start judging and talking out there. Just give people grace. And for you who is in the process, I have walked the journey for three years and now I'm on this other side and I can tell you it is difficult, yes, but if I did it, you can also do it. So be very patient with yourself. So my visa took three years to be processed. Actually, from the date we started to when I got my visa on hand, it was three years, one month. We started the application in 2020, December. That's when we filed to USCIS. And I've come with receipts, guys. So I'm going to be attaching all these emails and the dates of when every step was done, okay? So the first step we did in 2020, December 2020. Now, it took us in USCIS because then was the wake of COVID. Like, we were in the COVID time for sure. It took us a whole year to be approved. And so we received... The email saying that we've been approved in December 2021. So that's a whole year gone. So 2021, December, after receiving that email, of course, we start prepping for the next stage, which is the NVC stage, the National Visa Center stage. So here you, you know, as the applicant now, I had to like gather documents, police certificate, uh, my birth certificate, marriage certificate, the office that needed, needed to be paid. My, my husband had to file uh, from I-130, which is the affidavit of support. No. From I one, from I eight six four, which is the affidavit of support, yeah, he had to file the affidavit of support, and that took time before we could like gather all those documents together, and so we were only able to file I think February of twenty twenty two. After filing at NVC, they also take time to review your your application, and so at that time when we were applying in twenty twenty two. They would take um, three months to review. So we applied February, March, April. We had back from them. So three months. So we had from them. They went through our papers and my application. And they sent us a request for more evidence or more, more documents. So they requested for some tax document, W-2s that my husband had not filed. So once you requested for further evidence or further documents, you go back in line. So we gathered that document still, I think, in the same month of April because they got us quite, they got back to us early April, like 7th. And so I think by end of April, we, we got back to them with the, the things that requested. So April, May, June, July is when we heard back from them, three months later. And by hearing back from them, this time around, they were, everything was good. And they had approved my application or, or our application, okay? So when you're approved at NVC, you get documentarily qualified. That's that's the term. So you get DQ'd, okay? So DQ'd July 2022. And so we were excited because we're like, oh, no, at least looks like by 2022, December, we should be in America and stuff like that and da-da-da-da. Oh, rude shock on us. We, the, the, the hardest part of this process was waiting for us. And that's the 
Um, so after you're approved, NVC will send your case to the embassy, whatever embassy you choose. Basically, it has to be an embassy that you have residence in, okay? Or your home country embassy. So for me, it was Nairobi. So at that point, we didn't know that because with NVC, they'll tell you it takes three months, you know, anywhere 90 days, you know, uh, or less to have the embassy send you an interview letter and you go for your interview. But for Nairobi, there was backlogs. That's what they kept saying. Backlogs because of COVID. And so we had to wait. We waited. Not one, not two, not three months. We waited for 14 good months, guys. 14 good months. Something that should take ideally three months was delayed by a good 11 months. And in this 14 months of waiting, that's when I lost it, you know. I was so depressed. I would send, you know, emails to the embassy, you know, just trying to see what's happening. My husband would send emails and each and every time we would first get an automated response. And then at the end of the day, they'll still get back to us with the same, same excuse of, oh, there's COVID backlogs and we're trying to work, uh, you know, we're trying our best to work on, you know, all the cases as fast as possible. And that was the same, same story. So I even tried to do research on which embassies in Africa don't have so much backlog and there are quite a number. And I even sent them emails asking them to, you know, take up my case. Sort of like I could trans transfer my case and all those things came back with rejections. Here are all the emails guys I sent. I think I sent to almost all the countries in Africa that have a consulate, a U.S. consulate or a U.S. embassy. But I kept getting a denial. I remember at some point I also decided to transfer my case to Rwanda. I tried Rwanda. Rwanda rejected. I tried um, Tanzania. It also didn't go through. So I was just trying to transfer the case with like the visas that I had in those countries because I visited or the stamps that I got in those countries. But it never, it never went through. Um, so, uh, at just some point I got tired and somehow along the way we caught up, uh, you know, uh, with the media and, you know, there was some buzz around the, you know, wait times and we got, uh, Amakove, Amakove Wala really helped us and we did this Twitter, um, uh, Twitter space where every day we would share, I think in three, three, three times in a week we would share like the experiences, like real stories of you know what the families are really going through and from that i can say we really saw a huge improvement and the embassy started giving interview letters for like like every month they could give like very few in numbers but at least every month they did prior to that they would go even six months just silent no interview letters for a visa category the marriage visa you know but anyway 14 months later we got approved no, we didn't get approved. 14 months later, we finally got the interview letter from the embassy. And um, that was in December 4th. I cannot forget very, I cannot forget that. So December 4th, 2023. Remember, we got the kid July 2022, December, um, July 2022. And December 4th, 2023 is when we get my interview letter. And of course, now I start preparing, uh, you know, going for, I went for my medicals on the 28th of December. Everything went well with the medicals. And then my interview was scheduled for the 9th of January. And that's when I went for the interview and I did, everything went well. And, you know, there was some electronic check that needed to be done. And so after um, two weeks, I finally got my visa on hand. So I received my, my visa was actually issued on the 16th of January, 2024. I cannot forget that because it was my birthday, my husband's birthday. It was my husband's birthday. So it was a very special, special day. Um, and that's what reads on my visa actually, you know, uh, January 16th, 2024. That's when my visa was issued. And yes, I traveled to America on February 11th 2024 yeah got to america two days later i got my social security number and then after that a month later i received my permanent residence card <laughs> so i'm officially a permanent resident of america guys like it it, it has been delayed 
all right it has been delayed but it has not been denied for sure for sure for sure for sure i am happy i'm very very happy my husband is happy our family is happy and we are all excited and we honestly give god all the glory and all the thanks i say everything that happened was meant to happen everything happened the way it was meant to happen it has been a trying journey but in the end we have won <laughs> We have won and that's all that matters. You know, that's all that matters. Now I have all my papers, legal documents, guys, legal documents. I don't have to hide under the tables and do work under the tables. I don't have to see the police and I'm running away. You know, like I have my papers and they're all like very clean papers. And now I can start settling down here in America and we start building life here in America and just see what the next chapter of our lives holds, yeah? So I want to encourage you out there, if you're in the process, please hang in there. If you're in the process, hang in there. If the goal is just to get to America, um, you might have it rough. But if you're genuinely in a relationship with this person and you really care about them and you want to build a life around them and with them, then you're going to be able to stick it together. And I pray that for you. And I pray that, you know, things work out to your favor in the name of Jesus. So help me in the comment section to just celebrate with me. Let's thank God together. You guys, we have cried on this channel because of this visa and these papers. Now that they're here, please let's celebrate. Eh? My, 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 my favorite uh, lady, Lynn, eh? Lynn Goody says, we cannot, we cannot hide, we cannot suffer in silence and still hide our testimonies. We have to scream them out so that everybody can see that the God that we serve has not forgotten us. And for all those who said all trash, all manner of trash. Eh? 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 <laughs> what? Mutaji ficha wapi sasa? Where will you hide? But anyway, that's human beings. The only thing we have is our mouth. You know, we can talk. We are allowed to talk. Freedom of expression. Freedom of speech. You know? It's all right, you know, and it also happened in the Bible, you know, and God has a way of silencing all those people who don't want anything good for you. God has a way of silencing all those people who celebrate your downfall. For me, for sure, it looked like God had forgotten me. Well, maybe maka sasa, what will come on and come and you may settle Kenya sasa, nikama history sasa, this one is not happening. Eh? But who is God? God is not from my village. Eh? God is not from my village and he does not sleep nor slumber. Eh? His promises are yes and amen. And delay is not denial in God. Delay is not denial. Every single thing he has said must come to pass. It may be late, but it will come to pass. <laughs> That song by Gloria Muliro, Nakubaliana, has been encouraging me. Seriously. There's no way God will speak and it will not come to pass. And let's not use our tiny wristwatch to dictate God's one clock. Yeah? In his time, he makes everything beautiful. Look at me. 2024 was the appointed year. 2024 was the appointed year. And yeah, I look back and I'm like, God had a purpose for actually delaying me and delaying this process. I think number one purpose was to shut the enemies. I think so. If you ask me, I think the number one reason was to shut the enemies. Number two was so that I could do more back in Kenya. I have done quite a number of things. And it's, it's, it's a character building process. It's a character building process. Probably if I was given this visa or these papers earlier on, I would, I would look at them differently from how I look at, at them now. Uh, if I came to America back then, I was probably so immature and still a baby, you know, and probably would not have handled 
you know, coming here the way I'm supposed to handle it, so that it can, you know, uh, yield its 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 increase, you know, so it can like bring out the best in me. You understand? So there's usually a reason for everything. You may not see it when you're going through that problem, when you're going through that trial, when you're going through that difficulty, when you're going through that waiting season. You never see the why, but once you're coming out, and once you start seeing that light at the end of the tunnel, then you realize, oh, this is why, this is why, this is why, this is why, this is why. And I have so many of my this is why's in this process. So be encouraged. Be encouraged, my sister. Be encouraged, my brother. Guys, I have done a whole series on my visa process, on the visa process, everything you need to know, all the critical information, every document you need, how to file, how to upload all these documents, what questions you're asked, every single information you need to know about this process, I have taken my time. I have done the work so that you don't have to do the work. So please go and watch if you're in the process, if you're just starting, if you're in the middle of the process, or you're waiting, you know, it's stuck in one uh, stage, uh, before you move to the next, go and watch my channel, go and watch my videos. I am sure you will get something. I am sure you will be helped. I am sure it will be worth your time. Seriously. That one I'm very, very sure. And if you're not helped, come and tell me. If you watch my videos on Outer Sidika, please come and tell me. I'll pull them down. I'll pull them down. Yeah, for sure. Because I feel, I feel like I can now apply for or they go through this process with my eyes closed. If you want me to help you apply, maybe I can do it. I don't know. I don't think if I have the time, you know, and I don't want to really get into that because I'm not a lawyer. But I don't know. It's not something I've explored if I really want to start like helping people to do it. So my way of helping you is just creating those videos and you can go and watch them. It's a whole series that I've named the American CR1 Iron Visa Process. So click on it and choose the topic that you are interested in based on the stage of the process that you're in. It's a stage. You can't watch the whole thing all at once. It is stage by stage, step by And that's how the process goes. You file at USCIS, it's a stage. You wait one year. If not one year, you wait for 12 months. If not 12 months, you wait 15 months. If not that, the list I've seen people waiting is at least six, eight, six months, you know? So within those six months, watch that, okay? From there, watch the next step. It's NBC. NBC has several steps. Watch, you know? And prepare, 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 prepare. We don't want you to be put on AP, administrative processing, because of things that you could avoid and you can't avoid. So please take my experience, my three years experience. I'm not a lawyer, but I have experience. And I've also combined the experience of the people who have gone before me, those that were in the same group. We have a CR1, I run um, visa group for all those people who are waiting in Nairobi and Uganda because Uganda doesn't process immigrant visas, so they all come to Nairobi. You get me? So you can also um, comment if you'd like to join, and I'll be sure to add you. But please, when you comment, we are strictly adding people who are in the process. Tougher than it. So when I ask you questions about the process and you're not able to answer me, that is how I tell that you're probably not in the process yet, you've not started the process yet, or you're not even in the process. And so we share very you know, critical information there, so we don't we don't like to have someone who is not in the process in the group. You you get me? Yeah. So that's that's it. That's it, guys. I'm happy to be doing this. I'm happy to have done this. And now I can focus on, you know, what is the next move here in America. I think I need to get a driver's license. And let's get the car, babies. Let's get the car, babies. Because without a car here, oof, yeah, things are difficult. Like right now, I've just been very limited. I have to order groceries because my husband is working most times. I don't know how to drive and I can't really move or, you know, go anywhere. So, yeah, I think it's high time now we start living the American life. I don't want to call it the American dream because <laughs> I think that dream is long gone. People are weak from that dream. Yeah, but anyway, all in all, thank you so much for every prayer that you said over my family thank you for all the good wishes that you said over my family 
whatever it is you saw me from. I've done so many interviews. I've ranted out on social media. Whatever you came across me ranting about the process and how frustrated we are, and you said a prayer, you said a good wish, thank you, thank you. That has finally paid off. That has finally paid off. So I'll end this video right here, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Now American content to continue. Yeah, yeah. So as always, remember to be kind to one another, love one another, and treasure every minute you spend with one another because tomorrow is not promised. Ciao. Like you say ciao. Ciao. Say bye. Bye. You're not waving. Wave at them. Say bye. Wave them. Bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> what are you watching?